Sugar is everywhere. And it goes by many different names. And we're pretty sure that it's not a good idea to eat a lot of it. But we eat loads of it anyway. Part of the reason why is that it can actually be difficult to know how much of it you're eating. So today, we're going to go for a walk and figure it out. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Kev and today we're walking and talking about sugar. So this is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because I have an autoimmune condition and I have found that when I eat a lot of sugar, I end up feeling a lot of pain. And I've come to believe that for many people, overeating sugar results in a lot of problems that you may or may not realize sugar is having an impact on. This is because sugar is an inflammatory food, which means that if you eat a lot of it, you can end up with chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is a disaster for your health. So in this video, I want to equip you and me with some of the tools needed to help navigate this world full of sugar that we have found ourselves in. So the first question is, how much sugar should you be consuming? Oscar Wilde once said, everything in moderation, including moderation. I like this sentiment and I often hear, hear people say everything in moderation. But then the natural question that follows is, what is moderation? If you eat an ice cream every day, is that moderation? It probably depends on how big the ice cream is. If you eat ice cream once a month, is that moderation? Well, probably yes, regardless of the size of the ice cream. With sugar, this is a hard question to answer because when you start to look into it, you'll find that there is a huge and very deep rabbit hole waiting for you. This is because depending on who you ask, you will get a very different answer to the question, how much sugar should you eat? The World Health Organization, for example, are a bit more strict than the American Heart Association. Both of them are a little bit more strict than the EU. Most dietitians and nutritionists that I've found seem to side more with the World Health Organization. So let's go with them for the sake of this video. So what does the World Health Organization have to say about sugar? Quote, in both adults and children, the World Health Organization recommends reducing the intake of free sugars to less than 10% of total energy intake. In this case, free sugars means added sugars. So this is the sugar that gets added to the foods that you're eating. So for example, if you look at something like tomato ketchup, it will have a whole bunch of ingredients like tomatoes, probably water, and sugar will be one of the ingredients. And it's that sugar, this added sugar, that we're talking about when we say free sugars. It's also worth noting that in their wording, they specifically refer to the impact that eating excessive amount of sugars will have on your weight and on your teeth, both of which can cause some pretty significant problems. But depending on who you ask, people will go as far as to say sugar is poison and that it has a whole host of impacts, some very serious on your health. But I will save that for a future video. Actually, that discussion will probably take about 10 videos. So for now, we're gonna stay focused on the question at hand, which is how much sugar should you be eating? So if you eat around 2000 calories per day, the World Health Organization recommends that no more than 10% of those calories should be made up of sugar. So 10% of 2000 is 200 calories and you should be aiming to stay below 200 calories in terms of the amount of sugar you are eating. So exactly how much sugar is 200 calories worth? Well, it's about 50 grams. Why? Because every gram of sugar is about four calories in terms of energy. It might be useful to get a visual aid for this. So let's say this is one calorie. If you were eating 2000 calories per day, that would look something like this. And if 10% of them are sugar, then that would look like this. Now, the World Health Organization does also say that you would see better health outcomes if you reduced your sugar intake even further to less than 5% of your total calories. So here's what that looks like. So as you can see, this is a pretty small amount of calories relative to your overall intake. So it can be pretty easy to overdo it. A single can of monster energy drink, for example, would be about two thirds of it. So to summarize, 
each gram of sugar is worth about four calories. A teaspoon of sugar is about four grams of sugar. So every teaspoon of sugar is about 16 calories. That means going by the World Health Organization guidance, you should aim for fewer than around 12.5 teaspoons of sugar per day. Now, I'd probably lean towards the lower end of their recommendation, which is less than 5% of your total daily calories, which is about six teaspoons worth of sugar. Actually, I'd aim for even less than that. But either way, what's actually important here is that you're able to take this information and apply it in a practical way to your day-to-day -day life. And nutritional labels can help us with that. So let's take a look at a few of them and do some practicing. The first thing to look for here is added sugar. This is the sugar that the World Health Organization was talking about when they said free sugars. You will also often see a percentage there beside the added sugar. And that percentage is the percentage of your total daily calories, which is the value that we just talked about. This shows you the recommended daily intake of those added sugars. But straight away, there's a problem. This percentage is based on a calorie intake of about 2000 calories per day, but not everybody is consuming 2000 calories per day. So for example, if you are a female that is about five foot nine, that weighs about 59 kilos or 130 pounds, your daily calorie intake will be around 1800 calories if you're looking to maintain that weight. So your daily intake of sugar is no longer 200 calories, it is 180 calories. So that's about a teaspoon less of sugar per day. So you need to factor that in when you're reading these labels and thinking about sugar. Now, once you've got that in mind, we need to talk about something called hidden sugars. When we say hidden sugars, what we're usually talking about is the sugar that you find in foods that you wouldn't necessarily expect to find in those foods. So to illustrate this point, I went to the website for a local supermarket here in Ireland and I went to the search bar and typed in health foods. Now, I don't know about you, but when you go looking for health foods, you'd probably expect to find things like vegetables, fruits, meat, fish, whole foods, that sort of thing. But that's not what I found. One of the top results was this yogurt. So per serving, this yogurt has 14 grams of sugar, which is around 15 to 16% of the recommended daily intake. But if you look a little bit closer, those numbers don't really add up. 14 grams of sugar actually amounts to about 56 calories, which if you're going by the World Health Organization uh, recommendation in terms of daily intake, that's actually about 28% of your recommended intake, not 15%. Why is that? Well, remember earlier on when I said that the World Health Organization and the American Heart Association are a little bit more strict than the EU? I live in Ireland, which is part of the EU, so our labels are based on EU recommendations. And the EU has set a recommended intake at 360 calories, which is about 90 grams per day. In fact, on their website, the EU says this, which comes from the European Food Safety Authority. Available evidence not sufficient to set an upper limit for intake of added sugars. This blows my mind and really seems to fly in the face of a lot of what many experts say about how much sugar you should be consuming. Now, I'm not going to dig too deep into why this is. Um, there's a dark road waiting for us here that goes into conspiracies, conflicts of interest and corruption. And I need to get better ed educated on the subject. So I'm going to save that for a future video. The point is this. You need to be mindful of the values on the label because you could be looking at a number that is different than what you think it is. For a long time, I always thought that that percentage related to 25 grams of sugar. And if you don't do the quick maths, you could be kind of misinterpreting the amount of sugar that you're getting. I would have thought that that 15% was of my 25 grams, but it's actually of 90 grams. So that's something that's worth being mindful of. Who is setting the standard that is on the label you are reading? Okay, so with that in mind, the next thing you need to consider is serving size. Let's look at a 500 milliliter bottle of Coke. Notice that it says 27 grams of sugar here, which is 10.3% of your daily recommended intake, according to the EU. But at the top of the label, it says that this is per 250 milliliters. So this is the amount of sugar in half a bottle, not a full bottle. Pretty sneaky, right? I am very, very sneaky, sir. 
a lot of food manufacturers actually do this. They don't want you to know what you're consuming, so they make you do some maths to figure it out, which is probably just enough friction so that you don't do it. It's also worth considering the calories that you're consuming here. So a full bottle of Coke has about 210 calories coming from sugar. Now, when you drink a bottle of Coke, you're probably not feeling full. That 210 calories isn't as satiating as 210 calories of steak or chicken or fish or something like that. So it's very easy to overeat, right, when you're consuming sugar from fizzy drinks like this. In fact, if you overconsume by just 210 calories every day, by the end of the year, you will have overconsumed by 76,000 calories. These excess calories will be stored as fat in your body. Now, every nine of those calories equates to about one gram of fat. That ends up being about eight kilograms or 17 pounds of fat accumulated over the course of a year. So if you're eating your 2000 calories a day that your body needs to survive and then have an extra bottle of Coke on top of that every day, by the end of the year, you will weigh eight kilos more or 17 pounds. So this is why the World Health, Health Organization, the American Heart Association, the NHS in England, they're all very concerned about sugar intake, especially from these sugary drinks because these calories, which we often call empty calories because they have no nutritional value, they can really sneak up and become excessive very, very quickly. So all of this can be very confusing. And with that in mind, I wanna give kind of just three tips that maybe you can think about that will help you kind of curb your consumption of excess sugar. The first is just cut out sugary drinks. So Coke, Pepsi, 7up, sports drinks, Lucozaid, whatever it is, you don't need to be drinking that stuff. If you cut that out, that will make a huge difference from the get-go. You can drink water, you can add lemon to it. Herbal teas are a good option as well. Next, you can try and prepare more of your own meals. So cook with whole foods like vegetables, meat, fish. That sort of thing doesn't come with added sugar. Nobody's injecting broccoli with sugar. So you don't even need to think about this stuff if you are cooking and eating primarily whole foods. Finally, try and get in the habit of reading your food labels. So every four grams of added sugar you see on a food label is about a teaspoon. And you just need to remember you're trying to stay under about 12 teaspoons a day or ideally six teaspoons a day. So you can do that quick math in your head. How many grams of sugar is in this product? How many teaspoons is that? How many teaspoons have I had today? And to be honest, even if you're not tracking this in detail, I still think it's a good idea to look at your nutritional label and just understand what you're putting in your body and increase that general sense of awareness. You'll probably find that over time, that awareness feeds into, I guess, thinking a bit deeper about your food choices. So that's all I've got for today. Hopefully this was useful to someone out there. I know I feel a lot better when I eat less sugar and I'm pretty sure that you will too. If you did find this useful, please like the video, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, throw it in the comment section. And other than that, have a great day. Thank you very much for watching.